a lengthy lesson because I've noticed most of you based on the uh, problems that we have solved previously, especially the lesson that we had yesterday, you were able to fully understand. So for now, it's just to quickly go through almost the same type of problems that we had yesterday. So remember, guys, it's not really about me showing you how to solve this type of problems, but what matters the most is the approach that you apply to solve this type of problems. I'm thinking, if possible, maybe tomorrow, that's when we can start with um, physical sciences, especially inter making an interpretation on those photos uh, that I've sent. But for today's lesson, let's just quickly try to solve uh, those problems over there. So I see we've got a new uh, participants. I mean, a new participant is uh, Nielin. Nielin, welcome to uh, my lessons. It's unfortunate you joined at that stage where we have done the basics. So now uh, what we do is to solve for exam type of problems. So guys, I'm going to quickly write down the first question, which is 1.1, and it's x, um, that x plus one, it's equated to zero, and that question is allocated to max. So guys, uh, in mathematics, especially question one, that's where you are expected to do more of solve for x, simplify, uh, solve for x and y simultaneously. And again, there's that one unique special question where they test the level of your understanding. So for today's lesson, we'll only be focusing on solve for x. Maybe on our next lesson, we should focus on simplification. Then from there, move to solve for x and y simultaneously a type of questions and then from there that's when we can focus on those uh, special tricky questions so guys remember i'm only interested in teaching you the approach uh, that you need to apply when dealing with this type of questions so at all times which is what i teach in my grade 10 lessons what is this guys this is an equation why am i saying it's an equation it's because of that equal sign. So when you have an equation, what do you do? You solve. What are you solving? You solve for the unknown. In this case, what is the unknown? An unknown is a letter, which could be any letter from A all the way up to Z. But in this case, they chose to use letter X, which means the unknown is X. Hence, solve for X. What does it mean when the unknown is x? It means in the end, we must have x is equals to something. And again, already, because this is a quadratic equation, it means you are going to have two values of x, where you say x value is equals to, or x value is equals to, depending on whatever answer that you get so ladies and gentlemen remember you can either be given this type of a problem which is uh, in brackets or otherwise it's just a quadratic equation which is either in the standard form or not in the standard form where you need to work it out until it's in the standard form and again um factorize so ladies and gentlemen for the fact that this question is allocated to max that's where you just straight away equate that uh, to zero and again equate that to zero. So you don't need to say x multiplied by x, x multiplied by one, that multiplied by that, that multiplied by that. Why? Because it's already factorized and the whole of that is equated to zero. Only if it was equated to any number which could be a negative number or a positive number, for example, negative 2 or maybe positive 10, then you were going to transpose and do that by that, that by that, this by this, this by that. But in this case, you've got two hints. 
which guides you in terms of your approach to this pro uh, to this problem. The fact that it's given two marks and again it's equated to zero, then you can just say x minus three is equals to zero or x plus one it's equals to zero. Obviously, because we are solving for x, that's when you can say x is equals to you transpose. Remember, when you transpose, you change the sign. When you transpose, ladies and gentlemen, you change the sign. It's therefore a th x is equals to three or x it's equals to um, negative one. So for this type of problems, ladies and gentlemen, you are most likely to get your marks maybe uh, for that first x value and also for the second x value. So that's how you are most likely to score your two marks. So guys, I'm not sure if uh, you've got a question on that one. Um, or otherwise, was it, was it clear and straightforward? Yes, sir. No questions, nay. Okay, so guys, now let's move to question A 1.1.2, which says x squared minus x is equals to 4. And they say correct to two decimal places. So I'm just going to quickly write that uh, that one down minus x is equals to four and this problem is allocated four max remember guys with this type of problems you know it's a quadratic equation it's an equation because of that equal sign and it's a quadratic because of that x squared or letter squared which means you must write it in the standard form of ax squared plus bx it's equals to zero. So the manner in which it is given to you, it's not in the standard form. So you need to rewrite it in the standard form of that order, ladies and gentlemen. And remember, they said correct to two decimal places. For that fact, it means you must use this formula that I always say you must know by heart, guys, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So, guys, at all times, when you are given this type of problems where they say correct to two decimal places, it means uh, you must first write the given problem in the standard form. Secondly, you must use that. Um, equation guys so obviously after you've written it in the standard form you must have the a value a you must have the b value you must have the c value so guys let's write that in the standard form so obviously that means you must equate it to zero what does it mean when they say or when I say you must equate it to zero, it means whatever that is on the right side of the equal sign, move it to the left, move everything to the left and rearrange it in that order, which means you are going to have x squared minus x. Remember, you are moving that positive four, which means it changes a sign to a negative four and this is equals to zero. Why did I have to move that four to the other side? It's because I want to have that problem in the standard form, okay? So once it's in the standard form, I know I can apply that formula. Ladies and gentlemen, let's write it down. So it's negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus four AC over 2a. Guys, where is this formula coming from? It comes from that equation which is in the standard form, from that quadratic equation which is in the standard form. So what they did, they wanted to make the x the subject of the formula and they ended up having that equation. That is the reason why 
this formula it only applies to quadratic equations is because it was derived from a quadratic equation so ladies and gentlemen the reason why you have to write it in the standard form it's because you want to simply identify the a value uh, the a value b value and c value so that is the main reason why you have to rewrite that equation in the standard form so obviously the a value it's a uh, positive and again the whole of this equation is equated to zero we've got the a b and c values which means it is in the standard form so the a value is one the b value is what negative one and the c value it's negative four so now it's just a matter of substituting into that formula which means we've got x which is equals to negative at all times when you substitute put in brackets then you say plus or minus square root of in brackets is minus one remember that squared that's where you are most likely to make a mistake of forgetting that squared into what is our a ladies and gentlemen is positive one what is our b our b a uh, no no yes our b is negative one minus four a is one our c value is negative four the whole of that is divided by two uh, into a so this is where you get to that stage where you need to punch all of this by firstly using a positive sign get that value which is in a fraction form edit that sign and use a negative sign and then uh, get the second x value which is in a, a fraction form and lastly write your final answer in a form of a decimal which is rounded a correct two that's what they said from the original equation correct the two decimal places so guys um can you punch the whole of this by firstly using a positive sign and let me know what answer you're getting it's one plus square root of 17 over two so you're getting one plus square root of 17 over two okay. it's every, it's everyone else getting the same answer and then on this side what what, what other number are you getting either it's one minus square root of 17 over two over two so guys is everyone else getting the same answer? Okay, so Lerato, I'm also getting the same answer. So obviously, when you convert that to a decimal you get negative 1.56 rounded to two decimal places and then you do the same for that answer which has a positive over there and it's 2.56 it's rounded correct to two decimal places so this is how you would solve for this type of a question where you might score a mark over there for correct substitution and again they might give you some marks for x values and they might give you a, a mark for that simplification over there so guys before we move to the next question uh, are we all on the same page did you guys understand what i was doing over there uh, Nelin does it does it is it's everything uh, making sense to you remember if if you want to if you want to speak somewhere in the middle at the bottom there's a button that you can click where you unmute um to speak so in case if you want to ask a question or make a comment you can just do that so guys uh, are we ready to move to the next question Sir. 
Okay, so uh, let me just remove all of that and write down the next question. So the next question is 1.1.3, which is allocated a uh, five marks. So 1.1.3, we've got x plus square root of x minus two is equals to four. So uh, remember guys, with this type of problems where you've got a square root, you want to move everything to the right and remain with just that square root of x minus two on the right, you had four. Then you want to minus that x because you moved it to the other side. The reason you did this is because you wanted to introduce a squared on both sides. Why did you have to introduce a squared on both sides? It's because you wanted to remove that square root. So when you remove the square root, you remain with whatever that was inside the square root. And obviously on the right, it means that squared, it means you've got two of these, which is four minus x into four minus x. So now you need to work out those brackets. So anything else remains as it is. So this is where you've got that times that, that times that, this times that, that times that. So four times four, uh, what is it? Four times four, it's equals to 16. Four times negative x is negative four x. X times that is negative four x. X times that is equals to a positive because it's a minus and a minus, then you've got x squared over there. Then you can work out the like terms. So anything else, you can just write it as it is. So this two, it's negative eight x plus x squared. So guys, remember, this is a quadratic problem. So you want to write it in the standard form of a x squared a plus b x plus c, which means you can choose to move everything to the right or everything to the left. So it becomes easy if you move everything to the right because already you've got your x squared a as positive. So I'll just rewrite this in the standard form. So this is still the same as positive x squared, which is that positive x squared, minus 8x, which is that minus 8x over there. Uh, you also have positive 16, which is that one. So nothing has changed. I've just rearranged it in that order. So now I want to move that negative to the other side. Obviously, I'm going to write it somewhere there so that I work it out with its like term. I'm also going to move that two to the other side. So it's a constant that I'm going to work it out with that constant. Most importantly, it changes a sign. So because I moved everything to the other side, then I'm remaining with zero, which means zero is equals to x squared. This two, it's minus x, um, 9x, and this two, uh, what is it? I think it's 18. Then it becomes positive 18. So I can um, rewrite the whole of this in that order where I've got x squared minus 9x plus 18 and write zero on the other side. So it, it, it makes no difference if you write this on the other side and this on the other side. You haven't changed anything because you did not transpose, you did not divide by a negative number, you did not divide by anything. You just swapped. So can you see now it's in the standard form. So now that it's in the standard form, it means you can factorize. Remember from yesterday's lesson, I've simplified a factorization, guys, to say two numbers when multiplied together, they give you, um, what is it, 18. So I think, let's see, uh, what are those numbers, guys? Two numbers when multiplied together 
and worked out they give um nine so let's see 18 divided by 2 uh, 18 divided by 3 it's I think it's three, 3 is 3 and 6 so yeah. you, you just need two numbers when multiplied together will give you 18 and again when you work out those two terms or those two factors will give you 9 so now that we know 6 and 9 are the uh, factors, the bigger number takes the sign of the middle term. The bigger number is 6, which means the sign there is a negative. So because our constant or our C is positive, it makes that to be negative 3. Why? It's because you know negative 6, negative 3 will end up giving you negative 9, which is that middle term over there. So, ladies and gentlemen, you are almost done. You just need to equate this to 0, that to 0, and solve for x. Obviously, we know a, a, when you equate this to 0, you're going to transpose, then it changes a sign, it becomes 6. And then you say, oh, x minus 3 is equals to 0, you transpose, then it's equals to positive 3. So, Lerato, with this type of questions, this is where you then need to substitute that into the original equation and also substitute that into the original equation and see if both of these are correct. Because in such cases where you're dealing with square roots, you normally have just one answer. So, let's test if both answers are correct. It means where you see x, you substitute the first x value. So let's start with 6. Uh, this is how you do it, guys. So you're going to say 6 plus square root of 6 is 2. When you say equals to, it must give you 4. So the first answer with x is equals to 6. It gives me 8, which means a uh, x is not equals to 6. So that is where you see that type of a sign where they cross it. It's because when you substitute that 6 there, it does not give you a 4. Let's try with 3. So I'm just going to edit that 6. Okay, now it's 3 plus square root of 3 minus 2. It's equals to. Can you see? It gives 4. So that means you just leave it as it is to say x is equals to 4. So, guys, um, somewhere, somewhere, you are most likely to score a lot of marks. This question was allocated, I think it was 5 marks. For standard form, I'm sure you will get a mark. And then for that, or for those x values, you're going to get some marks. And obviously, um, for removing the square root, they might also give you a mark. And again, um, maybe for that, they can give you a mark. But if you show all the steps, you know uh, five marks is guaranteed. So guys, before we move to the last question, uh, are you happy with everything over there? Or do you guys have some questions? We are happy, sir. Okay. Uh, which means we can now move to the last um, question. So, for those of you who are attending this lesson for the first time, um, we've been doing this type of questions since the beginning of last month. So, most of the guys in this group they are now confident in terms of the approach and also how to solve this type of problems. It could be that you make minor mistakes of which uh, it's very much important that you notice those mistakes. And again, it helps when you make a mistake because um, you will always remember all types of mistakes associated with that particular problem. So it also helps me when we both 
make mistakes and notice those mistakes because we know in the future we are possibly a you know we are most likely to do a similar mistake of which if you have done it before you will realize that uh, this is a mistake and you will know how to rectify it so guys let's now move to that last question which is 1.1.4 which is x in 2 2x minus 1 close greater or is equal to 0 and again this is allocated 3 marks and again before i forget guys for those of you who are new to my lesson um remember i record this lessons so for you to be up to date you can catch up um on my website so uh, guys without any waste of time let's quickly solve for that problem remember because of that sign you know you're dealing with a quadratic inequality and because it's equated to zero then you won't have to hustle that much and again because it's allocated three marks it's not really a complicated or a lengthy calculation so just say that times that and that times that remember this sign it changes when you divide by a negative number but when you transpose or when you move uh, the numbers around it doesn't change a sign so when you multiply that by that you've got two x squared when you multiply uh, let's see that by that you've got negative x then you say this is greater or equals to um a zero so i think this is also going to take us back to a uh, the first equation where this is already factorized and you just need to work out for example in this case the critical um values so just notice something guys now that i've done this and i know it's in the standard form remember the a value there is two the b value there is negative one and the c value there it's zero so this is more like is the same as 2x squared minus x plus zero greater or is equals to zero so that's why i'm saying my c value is zero the b is negative one and my a value is a over there so now that it's in the standard form it means i need to factorize so obviously when you factorize um it seems like it's going to take me back to that original equation because uh, to factorize this one you need to take out common factor which is x whatever that remains is inside so this is greater than or equals to zero so ladies and gentlemen this is an indication that this step was not necessary because already this is factorized just so that it makes sense guys um it's more like this equation so i did not have to say that times that that times that that times that because already this is factorized so that's what i mean when i say that step was not necessary but remember it's not a deadly step you won't lose any marks for doing that um step so that means we might need to find critical um values so obviously you can say x is equals to a zero or remember you equate that to zero that to zero or 2x minus 1 it's equals to 0 2x it's equals to 1 remember you transpose and it changes the sign then x it's equals 2 you divide by 2 so that it cancels you remain with x then you've got 1 over 2 over there so these are your critical values which you need to represent on a number line between 0 and a half which one comes first obviously zero comes and then after you've got half which is one over a uh, two remember guys because of that sign of greater or is equals to you've got that circle 
which is being shaded. You've got that circle, which is being shaded. If it was just um, greater than, you're just going to have circle, circle. Even if it, it was less than, we're just going to have circle, circle. But the moment is less than or equals two, you have to shade. And remember, guys, uh, from our previous lessons, I think we noticed that when you've got a greater than, you are most likely to have arrows in that direction. And when you have um, a less than, that's when you join those um, lines. And obviously, you've noticed how to represent your, your, your final x values. So let's just quickly run a test. So to run a test, let's substitute with values in that direction, which are uh, less than zero. Obviously, uh, on this side, I can use, let's say, negative 10. You can use negative 3 negative thousand, negative million, as long as it's a negative number less than zero. Then on this side, you can use any positive number which is greater than half, one over two. You can use positive one, positive two, positive 10, positive 30, 50, positive million. So let me just use positive 10. So where do you use that? You substitute it in that a uh, equation which is in the standard form. So you can say, in brackets, negative 10 close, open 2 into negative 2 minus 1, you close. So can you see, on this side, you get positive values. Then, uh, let's test on that side. Remember, it's not really about what number you are getting. You just want to check if you get a negative or a positive number on this side we get a positive number so obviously a, a number which is in between you can substitute with a what is it a quarter so i think quarter is also between zero and um a half so on that same calculation guys you can say a one over four which is quarter you close into two into one over, uh, let me cancel that and say one over four, you close your minus one, you close a negative number. Can you see? So that means I'm getting a negative number. So according to that given problem, they're actually saying for which values of X when substituted on this will give you a number which is greater than or equals to zero. So that's why I'm saying, when you've got a greater than sign, you are most likely to have errors in those direction, which is easy because you just say X, you use that arrow, it's in that direction, but remember, it has got that is equals to over there. And then you say zero, which is that critical value. And then you say, O, oh, then it's X, you use that arrow, which is in that direction, remember to say it's equals to because there you've got a that is equals to, then you use that critical value. So guys, obviously, we have done more of this type of questions and I've given um, a lesson before we started solving exam type of questions. So I assume you fully understand that part. Obviously, uh, you might score a mark for representing that on a number line. Maybe you score a mark for those X values. So this is possibly how you score yourself a uh, three marks. So guys, I'm not sure if we were all on the same page. Did you guys uh, understand? Yes, sir. Uh, sir. Nelly. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Are you, are you following? Do you, do you, do you, did you understand from the first question? Was everything clear? Or you still need a bit of time to understand uh, my teaching style? Yeah, I understand. Okay, 100%. Uh, 
uh, I think, who was it? Was it Levu? Did you wanted to ask a question? <laughs> okay, so guys, it seems like we are all on the same uh, page. So I'll just check if for tomorrow's lesson we can do maths or physical sciences. But otherwise, uh, thanks for joining, guys. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. And this is that time where I say, my name is Desmond, and I'm out. So, guys, remember, I'm going to post this lesson on uh, my website. So just in case if you want to catch up, it should be there. I think it was recording. Yes, it was recording. I'll just...